Greetings shippers, welcome back, and once more it's time to dive into the realm of Supernatural. Now despite how it may appear, there are more ships going on in Supernatural than Destiel, although that is by far the most dominant. However, there is another that people have been requesting on this channel for quite some time. It was the winner of the special runner-up vote over on Patreon, so be sure to head on over there if you're interested in helping determine content, because there are always all kinds of votes and stuff going on. All of that aside, it's time to talk about Sabriel, the pairing of Sam and Gabriel. First off, Sabriel is also the name of a fantasy novel by Garth Nix, which can make searching for it using that moniker alone slightly difficult. And similar names aside, despite how popular this pairing has become, for some fans, its genesis remains a mystery. Now, in order to talk about Sabriel, one must first talk about Destiel, and how the arrival of a certain trench-coated angel changed the show's direction and dynamic. Before Gabriel was Gabriel, he was Loki, aka the Trickster, a recurring character who before Season 5 had only appeared twice, once in Season 2 and again in Season 3. However, the character still stood out, partially because of the actor's dedicated and enjoyably snarky performance, but also because he was a distinct recurring character, of which Supernatural has very few. These two things combined made the character quickly become a fan favorite. However, in terms of Supernatural in general, when the show began, it quite clearly hinged upon its two protagonists, to the point where within the fandom shipping realm, the closeness of the characters came to be interpreted as the controversial ship known as Wincest, that being the pairing between the two brothers themselves. A pairing so pervasive and to some on the creative staff baffling, it became the focus of a meta arc on the show, mocking fanfic authors who traded in such material. Mileage varies on whether the depiction was a gentle mocking or a true bashing. However, everything changed in Season 4 with the arrival of Castiel, an angel with a specific and narratively significant attachment to Dean. With the arrival of this new character and the chemistry many felt existed between Cass and Dean, a new ship was born, one that would come to dominate the fandom. While for many fans, Destiel was a welcome reprieve from Wincest, others felt it monopolized too much of the fandom, and others still were left wondering, what about Sam? Poor Sam, who in canon had always seemed to get the tragic end of the stick when it came to romance and just life in general. However, he had had some pairings, such as between him and Ruby and him and Jess, but nothing that came close to Wincest or the at the time newly emerging Destiel. This gap left some fans seeking a partner for Sam, many of whom were enamored by the idea that Dean literally had his own angel, a guardian angel, and some felt that Sam needed an angel of his own. Why should Dean be the only one getting all the love? Especially because of all of the, let's say, less than cordial treatment of Sam in the season wherein Dean met Cass. Season 4 was not Sam's season. Very few seasons are Sam's season to actually come to think of it. The problem? Most angels aside from Castiel were jerks and had no real attachment to the Winchesters, or were outright antagonistic. However, when Loki was revealed to be the Archangel Gabriel in hiding, everything changed. Gabriel became the focus of the Sam needs his own angel as well sentiment, and the two began to be paired. This also occurred in part because of how popular the angel arc in Christian mythology symbolism proved to be on the show. While for many this was a turning point that made them stop watching, it was also a point that gained many new viewers and cemented many fans who were already there. Sabriel first began to appear almost exclusively either in conjunction with or as a reaction to Destiel. Gabriel became viewed as a source for Sam to vent to and have someone exclusively in his corner and the contrast between the two's personalities began to be seen as potentially complementary. It is clear that Sabriel is a reaction to Destiel and the fact that the pairing does not really exist before Season 5. There are a few Sam slash Trickster fics, though most tend to be retroactive, and there's a reason for that, that being the two don't really interact one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, Loki spends more time interacting with Dean on the whole than Sam. However, the appeal of both brothers being protected by their own angels trumped any lack of interaction. As the shipping mind knows, canon is no obstacle to a good ship. Another factor that makes this ship unique is its ability to persist long past the disappearance of one of the main participants. Spoiler alert for those who are extremely behind in Supernatural, Gabriel nobly, or as nobly as he can, sacrifices himself in Season 5, and does not return until Season 9 where there is the potential he was just an illusion. After that, he isn't mentioned again until Season 11. Despite this, the ship has continued to grow and flourish. This is a stark contrast to the other Sam ships of, say, him and Ruby, whose death largely curtailed many fans' urge to ship the two. This may be in part due to Gabriel's status as a fan favorite. At the time of this recording, Sabriel is still going strong, with new fics regularly being written. It has, in its own way, become as much a part of the fandom scenery as Destiel, becoming one of the trinity of top three ships within the fandom, the order of which currently is Destiel, 
Wincest, and then Sabriel. So what is the appeal aside from a paired-off Sam? While both brothers are vulnerable, Sam started off as the one who needed protection and seemed more easily phased by the emotional ravages of a hunter's life. He was more mature than Dean and was resistant to their lifestyle. Over time, however, he became hardened and his personality underwent many shifts based on the variety of horrors that befell him, as well as the many plot points he was forced to endure. The demon blood addiction, being a vessel for Lucifer, being soulless, going insane from regaining his soul, and the list goes on. On top of all that, the relationship between him and Dean that started off as two brothers who at their core were close rebuilding their bond quickly became in the eyes of many codependent and manipulative. So for many fans, Sam was in need of an alternate shoulder to cry on, as well as someone who could heal him and allow him to have a good time. Enter Gabriel. As the trickster, he skirted the boundary between mischievous and malevolent, an amusing opponent for Sam and Dean to overcome in the era before the comedic episode had become an established staple. A guest star with enough charisma the audience is pleased to see them again. Gabriel's sardonic wit coupled with his obvious power made him a bit of a mystery. Just why did he do the things he did? An answer that was given when he was revealed to be the aforementioned Gabriel, a narrative move that added much in the way of pathos and backstory. Suddenly, he was an angel on the run, a being forced into a role he had played for so long it was unclear how much of it was an act and how much was genuine. He became an angel caught up in a battle of brothers he didn't really want to be a part of, giving him a brother complex to rival Sam's. The two now had a lot more to link them together in terms of traits and backstory. And the fix abounded, with authors feeling they had more of a clear slate to explore each character's complexities. In a way, the lack of backstory between the two created a canvas upon which many scenarios could be played out. Due to the nature of Gabriel's arc on the show, the bread and butter of Sabriel is the AU, a necessity given the retcons from the Angel plot and his subsequent death. So most stories are by the very nature of him being in them AUs. While many claim they saw the potential all along and demand a Sabriel most shippable moments, others are more quick to note they're not exactly exactly sure how, why, or when they started shipping it. Sabriel has had a bit of a snowball effect in terms of how it amasses new shippers. Namely, many people encounter it, be it in the form of art or fix, often at first as a subset of a Destiel fic, and are hooked. Similar to Maestrad, the appeal of the concept eclipses the canon material. Meaning for many, this ship is not deeply rooted within the show itself, but rather within the fandom surrounding it. Despite this, there is hope amongst many shippers that Gabriel will return one day on screen and not just behind the camera. As the landscape when it comes to shipping has very much remained the same since Cass's introduction, and since supporting character after supporting character has died or been written off, doomed to guest appear once in a blue moon, fans would love to see some favorites come back for more prolonged arcs especially given how many times Cass has been mysteriously resurrected. Some would like the same for Gabriel. They don't need a deep explanation as to how. It is really a show that tends to rely quite heavily on its core cast, which is both a strength and a detriment. Although based on how long the series has been going, clearly the strength side is winning out. Despite being able to count the times they appear together on two hands, potentially one depending upon the criteria, Sabriel will most likely continue to be one of the dominant ships within the fandom. Some of the more popular AUs include the human version, a headcanon wherein the angels are human, the ever-popular high school AU, and of course the college AU, for those who want slightly older school shenanigans in their fix. There are of course many more, but these tend to recur most frequently. Another encouragement for fans who are involved in the con circuit, an additional non-source material-based fandom, is that fan favorite Richard Spate Jr., Gabriel, has been greatly involved and positively so with Supernatural in terms of fandom interaction, and that Richard Spate and Jared Padalecki have great chemistry slash chemistry and appear to along well in real life, which for some shippers increases potential scenarios and galvanizes them. It is also encouraging to these shippers that Spade supports the ship and shipping culture. Slash fiction? Ah! You've never heard of it? Oh. And it turned out, I guess, in some slash fiction, I was having an affair with Sam. And you know, he is pretty dreamy as the general attitude of cast and crew has become much more open and positive since the days of early Wincest, particularly now that there are less incestuous pairings to support. And the cast and crew are happy to share their support for LGBTQA rights by encouraging these pairings, though some fans view this as a form of baiting and do not count it as a positive form of fan interaction. When it comes to this, opinions are and have always been split. So with all of this being said, why not ship them? For many, it comes down to confusion. The pairing perplexes them. Why is it happening? What's the 
appeal. They almost never interact. And when they did, it was rife with banter-based antagonism. And one character is off the show. Some, even if they understand it, simply don't find it appealing and don't feel the need for Sam to have his own angel, as it were. Others don't feel for either or both characters. And others still are intimidated or unenthused when it comes to supernatural shipping culture in general. Like with most ships, Sabriel isn't for everyone, and the heavy reliance on AUs is a turnoff for more canon-focused shippers. And there are still many Winces shippers left out there who prefer the idea of the two brothers together. Also, small as their numbers may be, there are some keeping other Sam ships alive. There is even a tiny corner out there shipping Sastiel. Were you guys Sabriel shippers? Do you still miss Gabriel? I kinda do. What's your favorite non-Destiel supernatural ship? Share all your thoughts down below. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons for voting and helping make this video happen. As always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.